Now then, Iran's relationship with Britain and several other Western nations has come under strain ever since the United States withdrew from the 2015 nuclear accord last year and reimposed its sanctions. The UK's seizure of an Iranian oil tanker in Gibraltar was followed by Iran's revolutionary guards detaining the Stena Impero in the Strait of Hormuz. And of course, Nazanin Zakari Radcliffe remains imprisoned in Iran since being arrested more than three years ago. Well, to discuss that more, I'm uh, joined by the Iranian ambassador to the UK, Hamid Bayadinejad. Very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for coming along, Mr. Ambassador. May I ask you, first of all, about these uh, two tankers? We've got two impounded tankers. Is Iran, in effect, trying to engineer some kind of barter, the, the Stena Impero, in exchange for the Grace One, which has uh, been impounded in, uh, in Gibraltar? No. Of course, resolution of one issue can help the resolution of the other issue. But the question is, there are, these are two separate issues which need to be tackled separately because, in fact, the, the Iranian ship which has been seized in Gibraltar uh, has been a case of uh, illegal seizure by the uh, by the Gibraltar authorities. Uh, no uh, international uh, regulation has been violated by, by the ship. Well, and, uh, I, I want to counter that in a moment, Mr. but just continue with your statement there. So you're claiming that's illegal, but of course the claim, and not the claim, the fact about uh, the seizing of the Senator Impero is that that was an illegal act. Anyhow, we would come to that, uh, but the question is first, on Grace One, as you know, the EU has, has the regulation because now the United Kingdom is referring to the EU regulation. In the EU regulation, as you can see, there is no regulation restricting export of oil to even Syria. There is a prohibition by European countries. To but not on a third country, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. European countries are entitled not to import oil from Syria. But exporting oil even to Syria is not banned for other okay. countries. But it's interesting what you're saying there, Mr. Ambassador, because first of all, you are saying, you are admitting that it is bound or was bound for Syria. But those regulations, the EU regulations, require any EU nation that comes across a ship such as the Grace One in its waters, breaking those sanctions, to seize no. it. It's not. That's the interpretation which is given by the United Kingdom, which we would not agree. And uh, incidentally, the European Union has been always, uh, in fact, uh, not accepting the extension of its law to other nations, which is the extraterritorial, in fact, extension of the law. So United Kingdom also, par par as part of okay. the European countries, cannot extend a regulation which is bound for the European Union OK, countries. well, the interpretation coming from the Foreign Office is, is very different, as you know. Well, let's get on to the Stena Impero, then. Um, the fact is that that was an illegal act. I mean, that was sailing in Omani waters when the Iranians, when your country, boarded it and uh, has now taken it. First of all, uh, that ship collided with a fishing boat in, in the area. Have you any uh, evidence, any physical yes, evidence? Yes, of, of course, of course. So the, sh the, the, sh the fishing boat was damaged and uh, there have been injuries. The second point is that this ship has entered the Strait of Hormuz uh, from the exit, la exit lane, which is against the law. It should come properly into the Strait of Hormuz. And he sees all ships that uh, allegedly do that, do you? Any, of course. any ship? Oh, of so course. how many have you impounded over the years? There or are, this is the only one? There are a number of such violations which is uh, prosecuted by the Bandar Abbas court authorities, okay. and uh, normally these things ca can happen. But the question is that during this very hectic time, which mm. we know that the, the Persian Gulf is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we have tension in the region because of the US policies, uh, that ship uh, should have been very careful not to violate such laws. But you were watching out for that kind of thing, weren't you? But let's say, let's just look at its positioning, because uh, this is the official tracking uh, in the Strait of Hormuz. No doubt uh, you've been poring over that. But uh, the red dot, in effect, clearly shows that the Stena Impero was in Omani waters. It was not travelling in an illegal position. And, and the fact is, I'll put it to you, Mr Ambassador, straight up, you've, you've taken it hostage to get some kind of barter for your ship that's been held in Gibraltar. Isn't that the strategy? No, that's, that's what the media try to say. But the question is that, as I said, uh, the, sh the ship of Steno Impero has been 
in violation of uh, some transit regulations in the area. And the well, how, how easily could that be resolved then? I mean, transit regulations, it sounds like a, like a parking offence or something. If you, were, if you were driving, don't they have to pay a fine and you should let them go? If you're, if you're driving and be at the, at the other side of the highway, yeah. that's a major offence. Well, you don't and, get thrown in and jail. Pa and particularly at this very hectic time, the, the ship should be very careful, in fact... Well, tell the, the, them off, we'll tell them they're very careful and, you know, get the owners to pay you whatever's due and, and let it go. OK, the court needs to consider that and maybe that solution would be uh, the decision of the court and, and it can be respected. As you said, there are always offences in the region, court would consider, and uh, other... Uh, in fact, they would either uh, some financial punishments, some, some punishments which are... Uh, the, in fact, exerted by, by the law. So there are solutions. But the question is that, in fact, uh, particularly this ship has switched off the automatic identif identification system okay. for more than hours. So that, uh, in fact, has uh, done a lot of damage to but the you think credibility. It can be, you think it can be sorted out? Would uh, releasing the Grace One help to sort it out? Does that have any bearing on the, on the status on the continuing impoundment of the Stena Impero? As I said, uh, the resolution of one issue can help the resolution of the would other. Would help. So the, that would be a sign. The question is that uh, first we are very keen to see that the United Kingdom is uh, doing all the measures necessary to release as soon as possible the Grace One. And, uh, well, the former Home Secretary, you know, you know, the former Home Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, uh, said as long as it's not going to Syria, you can more or less have it back, as long as it sails back to Iran. That is the question, because we announced very, very publicly at the, uh, at the early days that this, is, this has not been, this ship has not been going to Syria. So that well, you just told me, that, sorry, sorry, Mr. Ambassador, but sorry to interrupt, but you told me in your first answer it was going to Syria. No. That, well, I that, picked up on that and repeated I, it to you and you I didn't challenge that, me. I said that even... Even if the claim is that this is going to Syria, well, where was it it's going? not a banned activity. But it's not going to Syria, and that was well, announced. Where was it going? It sailed, it sailed all the way around the Horn of Africa to avoid the Suez Canal, came into the Mediterranean. Where was it going? We, we are not entitled to announce that where it's going. The question is that that was a claim by the United Kingdom that it's going to Syria, and we said very clearly that it's well, not going well, to Syria. But surely to clear it up, you should tell us where it was going. I mean, I can tell you one country it wasn't going to. It wasn't going to Israel, was it? Where was it going? It's very clear, and we, we have announced that it's not going to, the, to a sanctioned entity, but for the business matters and for the sanctions which are, in fact, uh, against Iran, uh, unlawfully, we are not entitled to say that uh, what is the destination of the ship. OK. Just, I mean, I use the hostage word about those ships, but, of course, um, almost as uh, concerning, perhaps more concerning, is, um, is a proper hostage uh, that Iran has taken for three and more years. And I'm talking, of course, about Nazanin Zakari Ratcliffe. I mean, she's not a spy, is she? Uh, she's... Uh, in fact, the question is that uh, she has been doing wrongdoing. But she's not a spy. Uh, you know that espionage is a very uh, flexible language. It, it can uh, involve many activities. So you turn up with your very young baby at that stage to see your parents and you're, you're a professional, you're an international spy turning up with your baby. When you are engaged in illegal activities, it doesn't matter you have a baby or not. When you are engaging in such illegal activities, you should be accountable to law. So she has been, uh, in fact, uh, tried in Iran, and that's a uh, five-year prison, which is something that has been given, given to her. The question is, uh, do we want to help her to be released before well, or well, not? Well, OK. So if, if that's the intention, there are some regulations that should be followed. We have a clemency procedure, and that should be followed if we want to have... Uh, but then she'd have to admit guilt to, to, be, to be allowed clemency. I mean, the fact is she's an innocent woman being held by Iran. Who is uh, judging that she's innocent or not? That is a lady which has uh, done wrongdoing and that has been uh, tried by, by Iranian court. And this is the judge that judges that she's, uh, in fact, is not innocent. 
Okay. And she has done wrongdoing. So, so you, you think there could be a way out, some compassion, uh, let me use that word instead of clemency, uh, could be shown. Do you think Boris Johnson, the new Prime Minister in the UK, uh, is the man to do that? Because I know you tweeted not too very long ago when he became Prime Minister, saying, as Foreign Secretary, he uh, was the first one for 40 years or more to engage with the Iranians. So do you think that he's the man that could sort this out? I said that uh, the Prime Minister apparently is the only Prime Minister in the UK that has visited Iran personally mm. and has had the direct talks with Iranian officials. So as the foreign sec former Foreign Secretary, he knows the situation, he knows the, the politics of Iran, he knows that how much, uh, in fact, we can, both of us, uh, engage into a diplomacy to resolve the outstanding issues. OK, and i just got to ask you about one other gentleman, of course, um, hasn't uh, featured large, but uh, does feature large in uh, Iran's future, and, of course, that's uh, President Trump. Now, you'll know that uh, a year or so ago, just after they, the Americans uh, removed themselves from the nuclear accord and reimposed their sanctions, uh, Donald Trump said he would certainly be prepared to meet with President Rouhani uh, with no preconditions. Is that something that... Uh, Iran would like to see? We are not uh, for, in fact, the camera or, in fact, the, uh, the media coverage. We are, in fact, at this very important uh, period of time, uh, we are very concerned about the, the policy of the United States, which has resulted to devastation, in fact, effects into the region and, in fact, uh, uh, imposing uh, sanctions against mm. Iran, which has had uh, really uh, effects on the many aspects of the Iranian life, uh, on, the, on the patients to receive, in fact, the, the medicine, like the chemotherapy, in fact, medicines and, and, and So it's and, having and a similar. big impact. But I've, so, I've just got to lastly ask you, Mr Ambassador, um, why then, uh, given the, the pain you described there being caused, caused by those United States sanctions, why are you alienating the United Kingdom, which is stuck by the nuclear deal and is working with its current European partners to try to keep it together, yet you seem to be pushing the UK away by these acts. That's why vice versa. We are expecting that the United Kingdom, as a partner to the JCPOA, which has been mm -hmm. a very active party in having this uh, important achievement of diplomacy, would really try its best to implement its obligations under the nuclear deal and also being able to uh, arrange with other partners to f uh, forcefully implementing what we have agreed within the nuclear deal.